Hello dear students this is Anirudh Singh Rathore and in this class of strength of materials we will be discussing various types of loads okay so this is going to be a very short topic and here we will be discussing only the various types of loads that we encounter in civil engineering structures so in strength of materials basically there are three types of loads that are asked first one is gradually applied load second one is sudden, suddenly applied load and third one is impact load okay but most important is gradually applied load most of the time almost 99% of the time you will be getting questions on gradually applied load and whenever it is not given in the question that which type of load is there you have to assume that it is gradually applied load only okay so apart from gradually applied load there are two types of loads that is suddenly applied load and there is impact loading also so what do we mean by gradually applied load suddenly applied load and impact load so let us take an example of this uh, stretchable rope okay so if i just consider this as a material that we consider in strength of materials let us say this is a steel bar okay now if i have to test the steel bar what i'll do i will apply loading which type of loading i'll apply gradually applied loading basically we'll apply most of the time so we'll let us discuss what we, what is meaning of gradually applied load so if i apply loading like this slowly and slowly i am increasing the load slowly and slowly it is stretching okay it is elongating in length so this type of loading is called as gradually applied load so i have applied the load this load gradually slowly and slowly i am increasing the value of this load okay so this is gradually applied load so it will start from zero and up to the maximum value of let us say p we have applied it gradually slowly and slowly we have increased the load to maximum value p okay now next one is suddenly applied load so if i take this bar and i suddenly applied it like this okay so time interval of application of load will be very small so it will be just like like this okay so that with that is called as suddenly applied load and then last one is impact load so impact load is like this okay so the, it will be creating an impact also so this type of loading will be impact loading okay so let us discuss basics of all these loading and what is the stresses that will be generated in all the three types of loading okay so first of all let us see gradually applied load so whenever we apply a load gradually what will happen that let us say this is the load deflection curve of the structure so here we are having load and here we are having deflection and whenever i am applying gradually applied load so loading will start from zero it will start from zero and it will reach a maximum value of p okay so this load value of this load here will be p and corresponding to p we will have elongation equal to delta okay so since this load p is external externally applied load and this is causing this much elongation so work done because of this load will be equal to will be equal to the area under load deflection curve this area so this area is load deflection curve of the material okay so now here i have assumed that material is linearly elastic for linearly elastic material i'll get this load deflection curve as a straight line okay so if i have to calculate what is the work done work done by this externally applied force that work done will be equal to work done by external force external force um that will be equal to area of this triangle area will be half p delta okay so this is the work done by external force now what will be the internal strain energy stored in the bar so internal strain energy stored will be equal to sigma square upon 2e into volume okay so this is the internal strain energy stored in the system that we'll see later on how this is coming but for for now you just take it that i am saying so that it, it is i'll teach you later how this is coming okay so internal strain energy stored in the system is sigma square upon 2e into the volume of the material okay and this is the external work done now external work done will be equal to internal strain energy stored so these two must be equal so that means we can say that sigma square upon 2e 
सिग्मा स्क्वायर अपॉन टू ई इन टू वॉल्यूम ना वॉल्यूम वॉल्यूम ऑफ द प्रिजमेटिक बार लेटर से दिस इज अ प्रिजमेटिक बार सो दैट वॉल्यूम विल बी इक्वल टू क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया इन टू द लेंथ ऑफ द बार सो लेट अस राइट डाउन दिस इज क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया इन टू लेंथ ऑफ द बार एंड दिस विल बी इक्वल टू वर्क डन बाय एक्सटर्नल फोर्स दैट विल बी इक्वल टू हाफ पी डेल्टा ओके सो फ्रॉम हेयर वॉट वी कैन से दैट डेल्टा डेल्टा विल बी इक्वल टू चेंज इन लेंथ चेंज इन लेंथ विल बी इक्वल टू स्ट्रेन इन टू ओरिजिनल लेंथ स्ट्रेन इन टू ओरिजिनल लेंथ सो सिग्मा स्क्वेयर अपॉन टू ई इन टू ए एल विल बी इक्वल टू हाफ ई ओके डेल्टा विल बी इक्वल टू स्ट्रेन इन टू लेंथ नाउ सिंस वी आर इन लीनियर इलास्टिक रीजन ओनली वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू गोइंग इन टू द प्लास्टिक रेंज एंड द मटीरियल वी हैव कंसिडर्ड इज लीनियर इलास्टिक मटीरियल सो फॉर दिस मटीरियल हुक्स लॉ विल बी वेलिड सो फ्रॉम हुक्स लॉ वी कैन राइट दैट स्ट्रेन स्ट्रेन विल बी इक्वल टू सिग्मा अपॉन ई ओके सो दिस विल कम आउट टू बी सिग्मा एल अपॉन ई सो इन प्लेस ऑफ डेल्टा वी कैन राइट सिग्मा एल अपॉन ओके नाउ इफ वी सिंप्लीफाई इट वॉट विल गेट सिग्मा स्क्वेयर एंड सिग्मा विल बी कैंसिल्ड आउट सिग्मा स्क्वेयर एंड दिस सिग्मा विल बी कैंसिल्ड आउट ई एंड ई विल बी कैंसिल्ड आउट टू एंड टू विल बी कैंसिल्ड आउट we will be left with okay l and p will be cancelled out so from here if we see we will get sigma is equal to p by a sigma is equal to p by a so whatever stresses are generated in this material will be equal to force upon cross sectional area so if we apply gradual loading okay we have applied gradually applied load in this case the stresses in the bar will be equal to load per unit area okay so these are the stresses generated in case of gradually applied load now let us see what will happen in suddenly applied load so this we already know so most of the time we use 99% of the time we use directly use this sigma is equal to p by a but if loading is changed okay if loading behavior is changed then this will not hold true so our calculations will change so if now i am having suddenly applied load what will happen in case of suddenly applied load let us see so let us see let us say that p delta curve is here like this so here is the load and here is the deflection load deflection curve now when i have applied load suddenly okay this is the bar and i have applied load suddenly okay so there is no gradual increase in earlier it was gradual increase in load now the load value is reached suddenly so suddenly i will experience that load is applied suddenly just like that okay here so maximum value is reached ma maximum value of the load is reached right away from the beginning so this is the value of p load that is that we have applied and let us say the material has undergone deflection delta here now what will be the external work done on the material external work done will be equal to the area of this load deflection curve this area area of load deflection curve so external work done will be equal to external work done will be equal to area of this rectangle it will be e into delta now what will be the internal strain energy stored internal strain energy will be equal to sigma square upon 2 e into volume again same okay so we'll equate both of them external work done will be equal to internal strain energy stored so sigma square upon 2e into a into l will be equal to p into delta so delta can be written as same thing delta will be equal to strain in, into length strain into length and strain can be written as sigma by e okay because we are still in linear elastic region only okay so delta can be written as sigma l upon e delta will be Sigma, yeah, sigma L upon. Okay, so what we'll be getting here again, and E will be cancelled out. L and L will be cancelled out. Sigma, sigma will be cancelled out. We will be left with sigma is equal to sigma is equal to two upon A. Two P upon. Okay, so in this case, when we have applied load suddenly, in suddenly applied loading. the stresses will be two times of gradually applied load okay so we can write stress in suddenly applied load will be equal to two times stress in gradually applied okay so 
So this you have to remember. Sometimes in objective questions, they might ask you the question: If the load is applied suddenly, this was the force, this was the area. What will be the stresses? So in hurry, it might happen that you don't consider, you don't, you miss out the word that the load is applied suddenly, and you might calculate by simply p by a. So that will become wrong. You just keep in mind that this type of question might also come sometimes in the examination. Okay. So suddenly applied loading stress will be equal to two times the stress that is generated due to gradually applied load. Okay. Now here stress is directly proportional to strain. So strains will also be two times as compared to gradually applied load. Okay. So stresses are two times, strain will also be two times. Now let's come to the last case impact loading. So for impact loading, consider that this is a rod and a collar is attached to the rod. And there is a falling weight that will fall on this. Okay, so if the weight is dropping on this, there will be an impact. Okay, it will, it will create an impact when it will touch this. Okay, this rod is fixed at the top. Okay, so now we have to calculate how much will be the stresses generated in this case. Just consider that if this load falls on this, what will happen? At that moment, here. When this load is here, okay, let us say this load is at height h, h height, okay, and value of this load is let us say, okay, p is the value of this load, okay. So when this load, right now, right now is this load is at height h from here, okay. So there is some potential energy in the load, and when this load will, when we leave this load to fall down, what will happen? It will slowly and slowly lose its potential energy and it will gain its kinetic energy kinetic and so potential energy will be converted into kinetic energy the speed will increase and when it will strike here it will strike with an impact and there will be some elongation of this rod okay so let us say length of this rod original length of this rod is l l is the original length of the rod okay and after the impact what will happen this will elongate there will be some elongation in this material and let us say after the impact it has elongated by delta amount okay it has elongated by delta amount so let us say this much elongation is delta delta okay so when it will create an impact, it will have some velocity, there will be some velocity and when it will stretch out to this maximum value, instantaneous maximum value it will stretch out, here the velocity will be zero and stretch will be maximum and stresses will also be maximum. So we have to calculate the instantaneous stresses that are created and the deflection that is generated. Now if we consider this as the datum level, okay, if we consider this as the datum level, this as the datum level. So with respect to the datum, initially the potential energy is because of this h plus delta and now the potential energy is zero. All the energy that is lost by potential energy that will be converted into the strain energy stored in the material. Okay. So let us now derive the expression for what will be the stresses here. Okay. So the pot here we will use some assumptions also. There are so many assumptions that the, when it will impact, there will be sound created, there will be little bit heat created. All those energies we are neglecting, we are just considering that all the potential energy stored here is converted into the strain energy of the material. So this simplification we have to use, simplifying assumptions we have used. Okay. So potential energy of weight, how much is the potential energy of weight? Potential energy of load will be equal to p into total height what is the total height from datum h plus delta p into h plus delta next strain energy stored in the material strain energy stored in the material that will be equal to sigma square upon 2 to area into length cross sectional area into length okay so now we'll equate both of them when we'll equate both of them what will happen here we'll get sigma square upon into area into length that will be equal to h plus delta now this delta can also be written as sigma l upon e delta can be written as sigma l upon e 
okay similarly as same same as before okay now this is stress will be becoming a quadratic equation here we'll get a quadratic equation in terms of stress okay so we can calculate the stress as by a plus under root of p square by h square sorry p square by a square plus 2 p h e upon a okay so this will be the value of stress if you don't want to remember this formula you can simply remember this one okay this expression is easy Prot potential energy is simply p h plus delta and strain energy stored is this sigma square upon 2 e a plus l just in place of delta you write sigma l upon e so no need to remember the formula if you don't remember you can solve it by this also okay so now stress is coming out to be this much now what will be the value of stress sometimes it might happen that the value of h the height from which this weight is falling is very high as compared to this elongation so if h is very large as compared to the delta what we can do here we can neglect the delta here we we can neglect the delta so we can say if h if h is large as compared to delta then we can write sigma square upon 2 2 al will be equal to p from here we'll get value of sigma as under root 2 p h e upon okay this you can so these are the stresses that we will be getting in case of gradually applied load in case of suddenly applied load and in case of impact load i hope this session was useful to you and keep watching we'll meet in the next class bye bye